Good to see all of you today. Although I don't see you physically, but I can feel your presence. Your presence is very real for me. Okay. Now, Today is a tremendous day because Swami just told me to speak about quantum field. It was just a few minutes ago. And I have no idea what quantum field is, but I can feel it. I can feel the quantum field and I know when I am in the quantum field, especially after yesterday. Uh, this morning, I don't know how you all feel. I mean, some of you are night, but for me, today is very light. I feel very light. I feel very uh, um, peaceful. It's like a burden taken away, very relaxed, very bliss in a way. It's got a lot to do with yesterday. Eh? Yesterday the eclipse, uh, lots of clearance, lots of clearance. Um, <clears throat> so, and this morning, I seems to be, okay, there's no direction. For some of you, having no direction is a bit scary. But this no direction is actually where we want to go. <laughs> because you, you, you're going somewhere, right? If you're going somewhere, you have to reach some place. Um, obviously, it's not material achievements because we always, after one material achievement, we will go for the next. Yeah, this is... Uh, common habit. So this is not something which uh, not material uh, achievement because you know this is a you are on the go to somewhere you're searching for something right so if you are searching for something you sh if you have found it you should reach it right if you are reaching it that means you are there's, there's no searching anymore if there's no searching anymore, there's no more direction. Correct? So if there's no direction, that space is a quantum field. Okay, now, this is a bit strange for many because uh, quantum field, no direction. Uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, I am actually, you all are very lucky. I, you have someone who is always in that state <laughs> speaking to you now. <laughs> because you have someone who uh, have, you know, you know someone who does that, right? Okay, you know someone who does that, and, and in a way, you know it functions because uh, um, I'm not sure how many of you know what kind of activity I do, but uh, at the background of this uh, entire platform, it's a, it's a town. There are many departments. And there are MC groups, there's administration, there's control tower, there is a, uh, this uh, cosmic space. I have to get approval from the top and, you know, I have to speak to Swami and Swami sometimes doesn't answer. So, uh, there's a lot of work at the back, yeah? long stop. This is uh, something which uh, it's a miracle. It's a miracle that this has happened. And, but uh, 
many people, yeah, I, I'm sure many of you also ask, you know, does, does this guy sleep? This is one of the most common questions I get because, uh, you know, I was wondering, you know, if there's any other spiritual questions, but they're asking me this, do I sleep? Well, I sleep <laughs> in a very short time, just like half an hour is like very fresh for me. Yeah. I can, if I sleep two hours, it's like, wow, holiday. But I don't feel any stress because I don't think. And uh, if there is anything um, I do, it's, it's just to be with Swami. That's all I do. And I believe that from the scientific perspective of, uh, of what is this being with Swami is, it's the quantum field. Because there's nothing there. There's no thoughts, there's no planning, there's no... Uh, if there is any operating system, it would be the higher intelligence. Okay, if, if there is. So, and the higher intelligence is very, very, very intelligent. <laughs> it's not what we think it is. Uh, it is highly intelligent. It is, it is to the molecule, it is to the cells, it is very specific. It changes even the DNA uh, by, by, you know, by molecules. It's very intelligent. So, uh, and it operates by itself. It's not, uh, it's not, but it's not like a machine it operates. It's like an organism, it's alive, it is full of... Uh, it's full of life, yeah, it's full of life. I think that's how we came about. We, we came from that life, yeah. high, high intelligence life. Now, if you were to stay in that space, you'd be surprised what you can do. Um, it can start with very simple thing as running a company or even managing your house and uh, your life, uh, your family, very, uh, but you see these are tricky ones, huh? this whatever they have mentioned, these are the tricky ones because it's a, uh, there's, there's a bit of virus inside. So, of course, we are in the process of taking all this virus away and, uh, and uh, we are, that's, the virus is largely got to do with um, our perception of what we can do to maintain this organism. Uh, that's the virus actually. Okay, if some of you don't get it, I repeat that. Uh, the virus that's in, if there is any virus in our system, is our perception of what we can do for ourselves, for, for the body, or for our mind, for our journey. That perception itself is the virus. So do you think you have, you have virus? Now, why is it a virus? Okay, perception comes from the mind. All right, if you if you perceive something, usually you want you want to think and you want to generate the perception. Right, it's, it's a mind job. Okay, mind does that. Why do you need perception? 
The mind's job is actually like, okay, I want to repair this watch, right? I have to think about how it's done. And, uh, and I think of all the things I need to bring to the tools to take it out and what I need to replace and I, how I need to put it back. Yeah, this is the mind job, right? After I finish this job, do I need to say, I know how to repair this? Or do I need to say that I can write a book about this, how to repair this? Of course, you can write a book to how to repair, it's fine. But is that the only way? Is that the... Uh, hard and fast room? No, it's not the hard and fast room. So this perception, when you have one or two, and then you start multiplying, and then you have 10, you have 100 perceptions all inside the mind and you're trying to uh, change something. It's crazy. Yeah, the perception would run wild. And this perception are slowing you down. Right? It's, you, you're trying to go somewhere and you see five perceptions here. Then you go further down the road, another five perceptions. So you have 10 perceptions holding you back from your journey. Because in your journey, you just go straight towards your destination. Why do you need so many perceptions? So to perceive, to, to, to always have a, a strong perception of something, it's a virus. Because your perception will change once 10 miles down the road is going to change. In the path of ascension, it's changing every week. Your perception of your reality is changing every week. One year ago, you don't reckon you will never dream that your street will be like this, your town will be like this, right? A few months ago, you never dream. Many, even like just one week ago, we will never uh, knew that we can experience so much in one week. So how is that? Our our dimensions are changing. So when our dimensions are changing, our perception is also changing. Perception of life, perception of who we are, perception of who someone is. Perception of the world itself has changed. Yes. Those of you who have been coming to the Psycraft, have been doing the double one, double one base, now you are starting to see a different world. Yeah, energetically you are resonating different, right? Because you have changed your outlook, your perception of the earth. That's what happened in the double double one base when you project the new earth with the solar flash, that kind of light, you are literally creating a new world. And it's not only us here, it's happening so many, so many monads are taking part in this. Yeah? So we are in the midst of a great shift, if not already shifted. <laughs> okay. So after yesterday, what happened and today so directionless. Swami gave this topic, the quantum field. So the quantum field is, is really something very incredible. 
I can share with you uh, more about the quantum field. If you all, if you all have heard about Connie Shaw, Connie Shaw, he does quantum gazing. Uh, what, he, what she does is she, she and her husband always come uh, on, on stage, I mean on uh, Skype. Maybe now he, she will start using Zoom, but uh, it used to be Skype. And uh, she, she would give uh, um, introduction testimony. And after a while, she does this thing called quantum gazing. Okay? Quantum gazing. So what she does is, I think it's uh, quite short, about 10 minutes or 15 minutes, where everyone turn on their video. And you now usually it's a one location. Everyone gather at one location. So she would look into them and people will be looking into her eyes. And a lot of them, they feel all kinds of stuff happening. Some would feel uh, movement, energy movement inside and some would feel uh, realization, some would, some would see gods, angels, some would see um, ancestors, yeah? Um, and a lot of people would get healed. So it's a very popular gathering for, for those who are having health issues. So this became a, a kind of a movement after a while, eh? Because uh, whenever she come on, she come on Skype. You know, there will be a lot of people. Sometimes you can go up to hundred. Yeah, but that's the maximum. Uh, usually, it's about uh, about forty. We, the one we organize is about 40, 50 people. Okay, so when she does that quantum gazing, it's just nothing there. There's nothing. It's just pure. Uh, quantum field through her eyes. You'll be looking into her eyes and you feel a flush of energy. Because she is connecting from the quantum field. And quantum field is very potent. It's very potent. It's a very uh, charged uh, high energy, high voltage. Yeah. But there's nothing there, you know? Okay. Nothing as in like a, there's no direction. <laughs> okay. So these are one of the abilities I can share with you. Quantum field abilities. It can, it can uh, initiate a very powerful healing. Uh, it, this, this testimonies, uh, a lot of these testimonies that come through are quite crazy. Uh, there are cases of, uh, you know, uh, even cancer cases which are getting healed. Yeah? A lot of chronic cases uh, which they have gone through doctors and doctors have no answer for and just two sessions like that. That's why it draws crowd. Yeah? So the next one, it will be more people, next one will be more people. Like so these are one of the abilities, quantum, quantum gazing. Now there is quantum healing. Quantum healing is where, you know, is something um, um, it's a lot to do with uh, passing of the energy and meditating into the energy. And when you meditate in it, you can use your hands, if you like, yeah, your hands, you know, if you were to do, um, you know, there's a certain way of doing it and you start feeling this energy. This is quantum energy. And with this quantum energy, you can um, put it on someone who needs it, yeah, someone who is injured. And uh, I, I have no idea how it has happened, but I have been using it for long time. It is something that happens with me. I don't know why. Uh, I've seen 
you know, cases which are quite serious. Uh, and there's one, uh, one, one case where my, my dog was, uh, was not moving for long, for, for long time and my sister was crying and coming and asking, you know, saying that the dog is going to leave. And we, she couldn't wake, wake the dog up. And I came and I felt so, I touched the dog and the dog jumped up and started running. So from then onwards, I realized that, you know, there's something there. And it, it is the quantum field because uh, um, I'm used to uh, medi meditating, yeah. I do vipassana, and uh, in and as many of you know vipassana, there's there's no thoughts. It's just watching the breath, or any movement or any any energies movement around your body. So uh, there, I I think I stumble upon quantum field. Of course, yeah, nothing happens without any reason. You know, this is. Totally Swami, yeah, totally Swami giving me this experience. And, uh, and I feel that this, this quantum field is somewhat uh, reachable, reachable for all of you now. I believe so, after yesterday. Yesterday was... Uh, Real, I don't know how. If you, if maybe if if I can give you some measure, yesterday could have wiped out a few lifetimes of karma. If I can give some kind of measure, yeah, it was it was very very uh, incredible what happened yesterday. Uh, Lord Rudra himself came, yeah? so he he cleared off layers and layers of the unconscious, and it was manifested through um, first energetically and secondly through uh, uh, Doctor Tomislav, yeah, he was called upon to 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 speak to the entire unconscious of the earth. Because who has the authority to do that? Only God can do that. Yeah. So I've been getting indications that, uh, you know, there's a lot of prayer, including Mother Gaia was uh, praying to Rudra to speak to everyone, and it happened. So if you were to really listen to the words that were spoken yesterday through Dr. Tomi's love, you would hear it. Yeah? It's all coded. These are coded stuff. Yeah? He literally took on the unconscious and, and, and changed it into consciousness. So uh, uh, of course, it doesn't end there. Yeah? Unconscious doesn't mean that you know, there's no more unconscious and, and uh, there are, but it is is less dense, much less denser. Yeah? Some kind of unconsciousness need to be there because uh, um, the dance need to happen. Yeah? But it should not be too dense at one side, yeah? too much at one side. That's what's happening you know, yesterday. Yeah? There was a sudden, uh, almost even a panic yeah? because there was too much of that. Uh, that. It became too dark. Too dark means uh, it turns everything to poison. Uh, that's what happens. That's why. That's why people say eclipse. Uh, the food, you know, you cannot you cannot consume it after that because it turns into poison, and that's just an eclipse. And uh, and when it's too much of an eclipse, I, you know, it's not only the food on the table; it's everything. So that was too much. And that's how I think this entire phenomena unfold. And we are ever grateful to Mother Gaia for doing such tremendous prayer for us. And also Lord Rudra for being so merciful. Um, you know, he really responded to our prayers. 
So, uh, and we feel this tremendous elevation yeah, today. Okay, so with this elevation, I, I, I was thinking there was nothing else to talk about because, you know, uh, and this is because we have already reached it. And Swami told, talk about quantum theory. And this is so appropriate, yeah, if we were to think about it, because uh, with nothing, uh, having, after achieving, um, you know, such a um, great clearance, quantum field is the right thing to talk about, because we are already in the quantum field. All of us are already in. It's just a matter of becoming conscious of this field. Uh, this is what this topic today is about. For us, to become conscious of this field that we are in now, all of us are in. Now, how do you know if you are not in? Or how do you know if you are in? Uh, this is this is the part uh, where enlightenment begins. <laughs> this is the part what I call the great awakening. <laughs> All right. How do we know that we are not in? When your mind starts searching again and your mind starts chasing outwardly again, that's when you are not in. Quantum field is there with you, but you're not aware of it. You are you are utilizing, actually you are utilizing the quantum field energy. Um, it is fine to do this. It is okay to do this. But my suggestion is do it consciously now. If you do it, if you go and you need to do achieve some uh, activities outwards, it is fine. You can do it but do it consciously. How do you do it consciously? Some in the Buddhist uh, terminology is mindfully, be mindful. Do it mindfully, right? Mindful of what? Mindful of Consciousness. Consciousness. Oh, wow. What is consciousness? Consciousness, huh? you need to experience. Mindful of the quantum field. The quantum field is Swami for me. Okay? For me, it's Swami. Uh, and, and because, you see, uh, I try not to use... I, using a different term sometimes is good. Because we need to uh, uh, not jump the gun, okay? Because we have this tendency. Huh? If, if I say Swami, you would assume that you you know Swami already. Many people do that. I say Sati Sai Baba, oh, I know Sati Sai Baba. Or even other gods, Kuan Yin. I say Kuan Yin, oh, I know Kuan Yin. Yeah, she, she says this history and all. You know, she has this temple somewhere. Is that all she is? It's, it's our perception. <laughs> uh, this, this is the virus, uh, the perception. <laughs> is our perception of Sati Sai Baba all he is? So sometimes we need a different word, a uh, different name. Yeah. This uh, quantum, the, the word quantum is very good because uh, it's scientifically proven, 
you know, quantum is a scientific term actually. It's scientifically indicating about this space. This space, there's nothing there. There's only its space. <laughs> it's 99.99999% space. So all of us are made out of space. How is that possible? Huh? In, the, in the third dimensional mind, you cannot comprehend this. <laughs> because third dimensional mind is largely got to do with tangibility. You have to touch. You have to use your five senses. And then you say it's there. But fourth dimensional, you cannot touch. You can only feel. Yeah, fourth dimension, you cannot touch. Fifth dimension, uh, this is very tricky actually, fifth dimension. You can say it's, it's word. It is creation. What you create through word affirmation. What you affirm, uh, you call upon, that's a bit balancing. But it's a bit a bit tricky here. Okay. You need to be totally detached from the third and fourth in order to understand the fifth. And the fifth is you need to you need to be in it in order to, to know it. Yeah? You cannot study it from the third dimensional space. You can't study it like a subject. Yeah? You have to be inside the fifth dimension and you will experience and you 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 know what it is. Okay. Okay, so uh, with the quantum field available for so many, many uh, abilities has come. You know? Quantum ascension has come. You know, when the first time this word came, this name came, I have no idea what it was, but I was just being told to, I hear the voice to put quantum ascension. That was a few years ago. I did not see it happening until now. <laughs> it's a real rising of uh, consciousness. Yeah. So, um, it's a matter of us plugging in, yeah? plugging in. So we use less of the mind, try to use less of the mind. You'll be surprised because energetically, the quantum field, if you were to uh, uh, plug onto it, you'll be shocked how much work you can do in one day. You'll be doing things which you can never imagine you do. You, you, something which you you are even you know you you believe that you you can never do and you suddenly it happens and I can assure you that this is is going to be something continuous because in the quantum field you are unlimited. In the mind, you are limited. In the mind, you are limited to what you believe of yourself and others. That's your limit. But in the quantum field, there's no limit. So, if you were to... Uh, be in the quantum field and you do your work, you are opening yourself to unlimited potentiality. That means you no longer say, I can only do this. I know only this because I have been taught in this school and I got a certificate and from young I used to do, like doing this. So I, this is my, 
स्पेशल थी यस दैट्स योर स्पेशल थी एंड सो विथ सो मेनी अदर थिंग्स योर स्पेशल थी नॉट ओनली दैट so that's why i'm trying to say you have to we have to be comfortable letting go of the mind yeah and i know it's not easy because uh, we are so used to the uh linear mind that used to be our way of uh, operating for so long some goes to even 40 years 50 years and not only 40 years there are few lifetimes <laughs> few lifetimes of this kind of habit uh, of course it's not easy to let go right <laughs> well i think it's time to let go because along with the few lifetime of linear thinking of habit there is also lifetimes of refinement of also lifetimes of gurus coming to your life knocking on your door and telling you to have faith and surrender and there's no coincidence that many of you are in the spiritual path it is a build up from previous birth you don't find yourself all of a sudden so comfortable in an ashram yeah you need to energetically uh, work towards it need to do something in order to achieve this so if you find yourself in a spiritual environment and you know this spiritual topics just come into you so easily and you so uh, in sync with it it is after a lot of work of course uh, it's two sides of work la huh? god also reaching out and we are reaching to him so there is a lot of uh, uh you know walking with god that has happened yeah okay so um with that amount of knocking on our door and also pulling our ears and nose along i think it's time have trust have faith that you can jump the cliff okay i'm going to say it again have trust and have faith that you can jump the cliff okay if those of you who have seen the poster i posted before yeah it's a picture of someone standing at a cliff and there's a huge hand at the back wanted to flick him out of the cliff and there's another hand holding at the bottom waiting waiting for that person to jump and all of them are labeled the hand is labeled god the cliff is labeled god the hand that's waiting to receive is labeled god so there's only two scenarios now in that scene one is that person who is you voluntarily jump or this finger is going to flick either way you're going to have to go down and where do you think you are jumping into you are jumping or being thrown into the quantum field why is this uh, picture so appropriate because the the cliff the cliff is all our perception of security our perception of you know what we need who we are
that finger freely in. If you don't jump, it's gonna it's gonna kick you. <laughs> and I know many gurus that does this. Yeah, I've been traveling in India since very young. I go on pilgrimages. I mean, not really. I just found myself traveling India to all the ashrams yeah? since a long time ago, and even China. And uh, I've met quite a number of gurus who, who just specialize in doing this, pushing you off a cliff. And, and it's, it's beautiful how they do it. <laughs> because uh, many people experience, many people actually experience the quantum field after being kicked. So it's a phenomena, it is a field which is available for all of you now. This is the best time to become conscious of this. After the, the huge uh, removal of karma, really, there's so much karma being removed. So uh, now, it's a matter of us tuning in. Huh? You need to just tune into uh, the quantum field. And there are ways of doing it, okay? Maybe we can go into some kind of exercise if Swami gives, because I have no idea what exercise, but that's what I heard. <laughs> And, and okay, another sign that quantum field uh, is coming to you, which all of you have it now. This is the biggest one of the sign, which is very obvious now, is someone who's in the quantum field talking to you. Because this quantum field, it is us. It is who we are. Yeah? It's just our mind needs to evolve and needs to merge into it. It needs to, needs to realize this and to just uh, allow, allow the quantum field to take over. And it's fine. It is weird for some because you are used to uh, planning things. Huh? So if all of a sudden there's no plan, Well, if you really check what happens at the, at the background of this entire mechanism, check with those people who have been running. There's no plan, really. It just happened. This entire platform just happened. We are just in position to, to, to be instrumental to this unfoldment. That's all. Yeah. So this is the quantum field. Uh, happening. This is the quantum field that created this entire thing. Yeah. So get more and more experiences like this. Yeah. And we will be able to become very conscious of it. All right. Before we start, let's have some questions, comments, sharings on this topic today or understanding of this topic. Side it up. Anyone like to share? Brother, may I say something? Yes, please. I'm here Sorry. for you. I, I just wanted, um, uh, you know, to clarify to people or rather remind people that quantum field is not a specific area sitting somewhere. Mm -hmm. It is all there is. It is just that some of us are not aware and some of us are aware of it. And it is there for you. It is apparent to people once they just go with the flow and not let the mind, you know, make ideas about what it could be, try to figure out what it is. So quantum field is all there is. 
everywhere. The quantum field is all around us. It is all there is. It is just that we are not aware mm -hmm. and we do not utilize the, um, the energy that is there for us to. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. It's true. Yeah. It's all around us. You just need to wake up to it. We just need to identify it, tune in, tune in to it. Yeah. Why do we need tuning in? Because we are tuning to other stations. We are not tuning into quantum field. It's there, but our, our mind is tuning to some kind of a um, uh, yeah, some frequencies, yeah, and there's some station, some radio channel. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, uh, tuning, yeah, shifting, shifting into it. Okay, thanks for that sharing. Anyone else? Brother Julius, yes. um, I have a question for you. I'm late, so I might have missed something important, but I want to know if when we talk about um, quantum, if we are in that space, are we in a place that is devoid of ego? Like, are we not going to be ego-based or is it still that we're going to be ego-based, but we are just aware of the surroundings in a different way? No ego. Ego can only come when there's a mind. There is an intention and there is a perception. If there's no intention, there's no, of course, you're, there's, there's one intention you can have that's to, to I don't know actually, uh, now that I've come to think about it. <laughs> Actually, intention also no need. <laughs> because there is nothing. There is just, uh, there's nothing there. <laughs> okay, Abrasa, good to have you on board, please. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. This is a very important topic and uh, one that we all have to fully embrace. I'll just share... Um, few things that you could try to get a glimpse into this quantum field. And as Sister Sun just said, that's all there is. Yes, consciousness is all there is. And why we have a difficulty understanding this or even experiencing this is because our understanding actually comes in the way of experiencing it. Why do I say that? All the knowledge that we've accumulated so far up until the time that we were open to studying oneness and how everything is one was all based on separation. So when we were taught that things are separate from one another, it's very difficult to understand the quantum field uh, because the only way to experience that is to go head on that everything is one. And the empty space that we see, or we perceive when two people are standing, yes, to the naked eye, if your third eye is not activated, you will see space. Yes, empty space. And we put our hands and nothing's touching our hands. So we thought, wow, there's nothing in between us. Uh, and it's just empty space. Um, but in fact, everything is touching and nothing is touching. <laughs> So, uh, imagine, uh, instead of the two human beings, imagine there were two balloons that were practicing social distancing, all right? So, imagine it's six feet apart, and um, these two balloons will see separation because the air inside them has made a shape of the rubber balloon, which we can perceive. Now, if we prick them, the rubber part of the balloon will fall down. But where does the air go? It was always there. It was just a thin sheet was covering it. So we are the quantum field. It's just that we are covered in a physical body. And if we believe our physical bodies end 
where we perceive them to be, well, my body ends, yes, at a physical 3D sense, the 3D frame ends that way. But energetically, we are not ending with the body frame. <laughs> we are inside and outside the body. But we are taught to believe that this body is what holds us, therefore we perceive a separation. Uh, that's why when we talked about the, the Merkaba, uh, you know, it's actually a huge field around us and not everyone's Merkaba is the same size. As we increase the capacity to hold more light, our Merkabas grow bigger in size. It's the capacity of the light that we could hold what determines the size. But to hold that light capacity, we got to have purity. Without the purity, we cannot hold light. So in the quantum field, um, first thing we have to go is just understand that, that you don't end with your physical body in two ways. You don't end when you die and your powers are not limited to this physical body. Energetically, you're much bigger. The physical body is just housing the organs. So, um, we really have to start seeing the empty space as a soup of potentialities that with our emotion can become a reality. It's, it's always, it's nature is to expand and express itself. So how we interact, it's, it's we upload and we also download from the quantum field. It's a dance. So, um, what we feel, we upload, and then we see it mirroring itself back to us. So the law of attraction comes into play. Um, so the, it's, it's difficult for the mind to understand. So it's, it's, um, it's one of those things where you really have to say, well, oh, if you show me proof, I'll believe it. Well, it's still not gonna get you because with that proof, there's gonna come 100 more questions. Um, so it's one of those aspects where you just have to say, well, yeah, a little bit of proof may get you interested than completely denying it, but uh, it's nothing but feeling it. And this is the best time because um, whatever we upload, we see it as a mirror in the material world that has manifested. So um, it's very powerful. And, and right now is the time that we've been gifted. Um, the veil, so to speak, is thinning. And the veil is not really an outside shield that protects you. It's the gap between your own heart and mind. And that's thinning out right now. So um, for the society which is here or any other faith for that matter, all masters said, go within. God is in your heart. So it, none of them ever said, you know, even right now for the society of Jesus, Swami's not saying, go put your mind and find me. <laughs> he said, go within, go to your heart. That's where I am. So uh, we really need to go within to the heart space uh, and, and get rid of the desire to have proof because it's not seeing is believing. It is believing is seen in the heart space. It doesn't need our approval to exist. The quantum field exists regardless of our beliefs about it. <laughs> However, if we are conscious of it, we could have a beautiful dance where we could create what we want to experience. So um, all I can suggest to all of us here is that most of the time understand that every single thought, every single word, every action you undertake is a dance with the quantum field, not because it's outside, because you are the quantum field. So it, it, it works. It works at the same time. We, we perceive a separation because of the bodies we are housed in. If not, it's, it's, it's a continuous motion that takes place. We are the field. Everything you see is part of it too. So I hope it, it helps some, but uh, if not, I'll be happy to answer a few questions from the best of my 
experience at this moment in time. Uh, because as we go, we are able to see higher and higher and more subtle dimensions where we keep on finding higher truths. So um, uh, I'll be happy to answer anything if anybody has a question to the best of my uh, experience at this time. Brother Saha? Yep. Um, I just wanted to share something, is that okay? Sure, please. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the, uh, the first thing that all of us do is to try to perceive and try to look for it. Mm -hmm. I, um, I feel that is not how we are going to find it. The more we do, the mind comes in and then the ego mind comes in and we won't be able to do it. And somehow Swami's message yesterday that there's nothing to achieve. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to achieve. Just be. Mm -hmm. That was his message yesterday. Beautiful. And, uh, and I think being mindful, being in the present moment, and not trying to actually find it. When you try to find it, that is when the mind plays. Just be, and it will come at some point. And when we experience that, we know it. No one needs to confirm it for us. Exactly. It's a direct experience that will always win people over. And um, so I, from the healing work that I'm involved in, in reconnective healing, this is, I, I find this as a beautiful tool. Um, I mean, I never thought of it during the practice that it's going to have the same way, but I find it as a wonderful way of a direct experience for people because you could sit um, and read and watch videos and, and it'll explain everything theoretically, but until you have that direct experience, it's just a theory. So um, I've had clients who, you know, have whatsoever, everything is woo-woo stuff for them. If they can see it, touch it, smell it, taste it, well, it doesn't exist kind of people. And then we do a healing session and they say why was my leg moving I wasn't moving that why did I uh, you know do this with my my uh, hands or why did my uh, eye started you know eyelids start to flicker uh, and and why did I feel this you know pulsating wave of electricity going through my left arm or my right knee and and it was painful and I know I felt it well I believe part of the healing why they are experiencing that is for them to have a direct experience of the quantum field, especially when they are 10,000 miles away. And it's happening at the same time. So we agree on a moment, okay, we will start at 10 p.m. your time and my time, 6 a.m., whatever. And sometimes it starts happening even a few minutes before we even start the session. Now, that's where it gets really interesting because I always tell the person to lie down three to four minutes before, but at least two minutes before and just start breathing like a baby just to settle themselves in. And they come back and say, well, soon as I lie down, I close my eyes. I was feeling it, but you should be going to start in two minutes. And that's true. I was not starting that um, consciously, but the second we connect to that feel is active. It doesn't really require uh, me moving my hands around and, and dancing with the energy. Just with that thought, started working. And it's happened multiple times before the session. And it also continues to happen even after the session. People go, well, I know you stopped, but it's two days and I'm still feeling this. I said, well, that's because I'm not sending you any energy. I'm just, I just dance with it. But right now you're dancing with it. And it's intelligent. It's working with your energy field. So uh, this helps, I believe, a lot of people as much as the healing because they are now confronted with an experience that nothing they ever knew can explain. And when people come to that, and it's the direct experience, uh, for some people, it, it helps them to make a radical change in the way they choose to see the world. You see, we all select a way to see the world. So when that happens firsthand, 
uh, and sometimes after two or three sessions and it, it starts getting more profound, uh, it leaves them completely changed. They are no longer able to experience this world as the way they did. And that opens them up to higher levels of perception and that starts a new journey. And I've had many uh, people who are pretty much very left brain, uh, linear thinking, and then they said, wow, can I also do this? And I said, obviously you could do it too. We all can do this. It's not that anything special I'm doing. We all can do that. But how do I do it? I said, well, you just got to learn how to dance with the field. But before they would have never ever asked that question because for them it did not exist. Now after what they've experienced, many say, oh, I also want to do this. Uh, I also want to heal. And that's also part of our true nature because we are here to heal each other. And uh, it, it just switches gears in such a way, uh, even if they don't learn the same modality, which is fine. But just the fact that they're now able to experience the world and see it beyond the 3D limitations is simply opening a path for them uh, for higher levels of awareness. So I, I find that a great side effect effect <laughs> of distant healings um, because um, lots of people need that little push <laughs> to, to really shatter all the boundaries that they have. So direct experiences are, are the way to go. One of the concerns that people have when, you know, about the quantum field and people have asked me is, um, oh, what if I'm not able to function in this world? What if I'm uh, totally out of frame and I'm not able to do my day-to-day -day activities? And that is not true. You're actually <laughs> able to function so much more efficiently. You yes. do tasks, you're able to perform tasks that you are not able to with minimum expenditure of energy. And I think all of, all of us people in this group would have noticed we are requiring less sleep, we are eating less, but we are so energized. So that's the beauty of the system when you are in the field. That's the beauty of the system. Yes, very true. It's the flow that we allow because in our 3D system, we have limitations. We have put on barriers. We have polarized views, how things should be and should not be. But in the quantum field, when we allow the dance, it actually flows far more efficiently and gracefully and even in accelerated time uh, because we are no longer actually focused at the polarized view on the outcome. We are doing it, yes, but we are not so attached to that specific outcome how we think something should be. And in that ability to let go of an outcome, something far bigger than we ever expected happens. And because we are not holding on to something and our views of it should be this way or that way, we are not wasting our energy. <laughs> we are not putting energy on to hold on to things. We are just moving with the flow. And in that state of surrender, um, we actually can be far more energized. As you said, we find ourselves with so much more energy. Yes, a few hours of sleep, but we could run for two days. Um, and and we actually have more joy in whatever we are doing too, because we are not fixated on that outcome, but we are actually being present in that experience in that moment. And um, it, it takes some training to do, but pretty soon what happens is you can't deny the joy and the lightness that you feel in every aspect of your life, the way you just, you know, just function through the day. Yes, you could be stuck in traffic and you're going for a meeting, but it doesn't bother you like before. You understand that everybody else, the guy in front of you and the guy behind you is also going somewhere important. And they're not here sightseeing. They're also stuck in traffic. So you no longer try to blame anybody for being on the road or driving a bad way. Just like, all right, cool. I'll get there. And you start praying for everyone. You say, wow, great. May everybody get to their place on time in divine perfection. 
before it's like i don't care what the traffic is but i need to get there by 10 o'clock so get get out of my way <laughs> but uh it starts changing you in many ways where you can't deny the peace that you feel and that's the time uh when your body starts feeling that state of being instead of of just running and doing and feeling tension, the body says to the mind, wow, I like the way it feels. I'm not stressed. When the body is not stressed, the mind actually cannot make it feel stressed. The body is now on your side. It knows how it feels when you're at ease. It knows how you feel when you're tensed up. So when we get our bodies to understand this feeling, to fully embrace that feeling of just being, it's another great way of getting your mind to cooperate with that feeling because now all the God cells in your body is demanding that feeling. It says, look, I don't want to feel tense stuff. I like this way of being. So the old programs can't really run anymore. The body is now on your side. So beautiful side effects that take place. Uh, and, um, and the more you, you start being aware of it, uh, everything just becomes a beautiful experience. Uh, you may hear things that are so disturbing for someone. Oh my God, did you hear what they said about this? Well, okay. And so what? So just this morning, somebody told me, well, oh my God, India and China are going to go to war. And da, da, da. So I said, well, who said so? Well, they're, they're almost at it right now. Who said so? Well, he's all over the news. Well, okay. That's what they want you to go. But instead of watching that and sending, yes, they're going to go to war. Even if you happen to hear the news, why don't you just sit there and say, well, they're not going to go to war and send love to all the soldiers on both sides, whatever the uniform they're wearing, what color they're wearing, whatever the man-made perceived geographical border that they're fighting over. <laughs> it's... it's it has no meaning. Who controls the strip of land at a human level? Well, might be a big deal for them, but in the grand scale of things, it's a complete waste of time. So it's the egos of the countries that are fighting. Who owns this? <laughs> it's not like who could make the strip of land better for humanity and how we could grow something here maybe and, and give people, you know, better quality food. No, we'll fight over it. Who owns it and shoot at each other and, and have, you know, post to watch who's going to cross the border and shoot them. <laughs> so, um, but when you're on the path, you could hear these things and you'll be able to see it from a higher perspective and not get caught in that vortex. So important. And that's a sign of you making progress. You may hear things that are so disturbing for someone and they want to fight. They say, oh my God, I could kill this person for doing this. And you're like, wow, this person who's doing this needs so much more help. And the one who's troubled by it also needs some help. So you're able to just stand on your ground and you have discrimination and discernment. Yes. But it's faster, it's more decisive, um, and it's accurate but you're not polarized. You're able to see through, there's no gray area, but you're able to see through all this in oneness, bound by the ultimate power of unconditional love. It's bound by unconditional love. You're not seeing a contrast and taking a side. You're seeing the contrast and staying in middle ground and say, wow, <laughs> you know, this situation needs some love. And uh, yes, so um, it's these are these things just come to you so naturally. You don't even really have to try to do that. It just happens to you, and you'll see yourself being much more common as you see and hear these things. And people will look at you and say, "Oh my God, aren't you bothered? Aren't you worried that China and India are going to go to war?" I'm like, well, in your world, they they already started the war. In my world, they're they're making peace already. They have made peace already. <laughs> So this is where we could influence the quantum field with our emotion. And the quantum field responds to us because there's nothing separate. But for this purpose of being in a physical body, we see what we're feeling manifesting in front of us. 
especially right now with the collective group energy. If enough people happen to watch this fear-mongering news and say, wow, we're going to send love to all the leaders of this country and all the military generals and the soldiers in the battlefront, nobody will fire another bullet. That's how powerful consciousness is. It could stop a bomb from exploding, even though it's dropped on people. That's how powerful our intentions are. So, but we if you feed the other part, well, that's what becomes a reality. So, uh, one of the best ways to see if you're in the path is to find out how polarized are you. And if things don't trigger you and you don't get upset and you start using profanity against some leader or a business leader or whoever it is for their agenda, well, then you understand you're on the right track. You're not just holding the light for yourself, but by you being in that path, even the polarized ones that come at you, well, they decide to follow your light. <laughs> because, because by you neutralizing that, they feel peace. They come with so much fire and you just douse it off. Some will protest. But then they understand, wow, that felt good. Really? So you don't think they're going to go to war? No, they're not. Oh, okay, that's great. I feel relieved now. Well, you are co-creating peace, my friend. <laughs> so this is the beauty of this, um, uh, how, how when we start, because that person who's polarized is also God, right? So um, you start feeling this. You allow yourself to feel it. But if you'd feel yourself becoming less and less polarized by everything that you probably even had a strong attachment or, or a viewpoint, maybe even one week ago, and you no longer feel troubled by it. You're like, all right, okay, that's it. Uh, it could be shocking for people around you. They might think you're going crazy and you're losing interest in life. And oh my God, you have no idea what's happening in the world. Don't you care? No, because I care, I'm not getting involved in the drama. I am getting involved in creating what we do desire individually and collectively than getting into a situation where we co-creating more of what we've been suffering from. So if you think that somebody is, is vocal about it and they're you know, having polarized views that they're caring, no, actually they're not. They're not sending any love to the situation. They're expressing only opinions, which is fully polarized and backed by very strong emotions that are not co-creating anything. They're only going to send that energy to sustain whatever we don't want. So instead of practicing on whatever we don't want, we are practicing what we do want. And that's for the highest good of everyone. So it's going to manifest. It's no longer about get me a good job. It's about a prayer. May everyone have abundance. May everybody be able to feed their families and care for the sick and the elderly and, and have comfortable homes to live in. It's not about get me a race so I could buy this next apartment. I'm closer to work and, and I could have a better car. It's no longer about that. So this is when where we can go um, with, with the power of... Um, being not polarized with things that are happening around us. Anybody got any questions or thoughts they want to share? So I think that's, I think that's wonderful. In fact, I feel as though I'm going in the same direction. I don't listen to news or to TV or anything like that. Um, and so nothing like that really worries me. And Beautiful. you're right, it just feels really nice, really good and peaceful. And I'm worried. Thank you. Bless you. That's the best thing we can do when we hold the light for ourselves and everyone else because we are uploading that energy into the quantum field. 
And, and we may think, oh, well, how can just my little thought make a difference? Well, we all do because we all God. And the purer our thoughts, our emotions, and there we go. We co-create it for everyone. And as a group, when we do this, wow, it's exponential. Fantastic. I'm glad that you feel the same way. A lot of people are simply victims of the news that they watch. <laughs> so it's sad, but that's the, that's the number one thing that, that polarizes people and, and make them see separation. It, even with, the, with the, the pandemic that is uniting people in many ways, they still want to see difference, how one country did it better than the other country, how one country's healthcare sector is better than the other one. <laughs> Even there, they're trying to make you see differences. Oh, well, maybe our country's healthcare sucks because the other country did that. And this country did this for their poor people, but in our country, we didn't get anything. Once again, they want to put you in that you know, state of polarity where you can find the balance. So um, if you could see all this news and laugh at it and, and bless all the ones who are wearing from their, uh, working from their lack of awareness, well, that's great. That's where we need to, uh, uh, we need to be. We are the lighthouses. <laughs> so glad that you could do that while watching news or happen to, I don't even watch it, but even if you happen to hear it, you don't get triggered. Sai Ram, brother Saha. Yeah, uh, yeah. I understand uh, uh, what uh, I am trying to understand the the concept you are narrating. For an example, like uh, you know, like when we started this program, actually we lost even lost interest in the in the in the news, and it start it doesn't resonate. Uh, usually, it doesn't uh, now uh, these days resonate very much. However that there are situations, for an example, when you run into uh, some uh, situation, for an example, that uh, uh, there is a, a group of uh, 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 group of ladies who are running a market. Uh, recently, they happened uh, to share some information, for an example, they were saying, you know, like, they were narrating, you know, like they were betrayed because uh, the local authorities, uh, who promised them some building and got the funding and the, got the building. Now they have given the building for some, some other purposes and they are earning the money, some kind of thing. So now if, if I were a person before this group, I would have definitely, you know, like I felt, oh, these people right, that people wrong, this kind of thing. But still, when, they, when I see them, you know, like they are in the... Uh, uh, struggle. They don't have the basic facilities, and and this building is constructed, and then someone is else is uh, having their all comfort. Uh, so how we in such situation like how we pray or what, but how uh, like we send our light uh, to them or how this uh, we uh, uh, respond to this situation. Okay, great question. Yes. Um, see, you use the right word by saying respond and response doesn't always mean that we have to verbalize it or take some action. Sometimes the response is just sending out a prayer in silence to all parties involved. Um, yes, based on what we experience and where we have sensitivities towards, we will take a side and say, oh yeah, these people who took the building and did not give it to the people who deserve how bad they are. Uh, that's one way. Or the other way, you can simply say, well, we are judging the action, but not the people. This is very important. Okay. So spirituality doesn't mean there is no, you know, discrimination and discernment. No, it's actually gets much more sharper as you go up. But the difference is you're no longer judging a person, an individual and condemning them as somebody bad. You're only seeing which action is of highest good and which action is not. So when you remove that, you're able to love the people on both sides because you're not judging the person with the action. You're simply saying, well, one choice that a group has made is not serving the highest purpose, where 
another choice could have served the highest purpose. So uh, when you come from that, you don't have an emotional charge, a preference or a hatred to either group. This is how most of the times we get caught up with. Uh, we, we support one party, even if you don't know them, based on what we hold as our values and our ways of seeing things. And we condemn the other party and, and we don't, don't even know what led to this situation. So uh, the best way to do that is when you hear it, and if it's understand it's not your problem, that you don't need to lose sleep over it. But if you feel compassion for the ones who are getting affected by it, use your heart space to send a message of love to these ones who did not get this building and to the ones who are manipulating the papers, if that's what's happening. But understand that both parties are right. From the level of awareness, they have allowed themselves to be in. So this is important that that people are operating, they're playing their roles from the level of awareness they have allowed themselves to be in at that time. And it's another mistake we made. Oh yeah, this group of people, they're always like this. No wonder it's gonna happen this way. And the second we do that, we actually project our way, the way we see them, onto their actions, which only further strengthens that behavior in them. It doesn't help them to switch the tracks because deep inside, they're also looking for the same light because they are light. It's a matter of just letting go of what they're not. So we say, well, it's been happening, but from now on, I'm sending them love to see a bigger, brighter, better picture for all. And that is far more powerful and far more useful to be sent and saying, oh my God, these people are terrible and then I hope they get caught by the law enforcement and put behind bars. <laughs> no. So, so this is where we have to practice that. Use the power of your emotions uh, and use it correctly for all parties so everyone finds the best solution. So that's where you got to be conscious of what emotions are taking place as you hear these stories. If somebody comes and tells you their sad story, well, what emotions do you feel? So this is where you got to watch your own emotions in, and go into the higher levels and use that to send love and light to all parties and situations that you come across. It's fun. Start practicing it. You'll be amazed by the power that you hold in your heart. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Yeah. Well, looks like we've come to almost the end of our session for today. We got five minutes. If anybody's got any other questions or they want to share their thoughts before we pass on the channel for the next program. Thank you uh, for all these wonderful words because they're absolutely true. And um, when you come to think of it, life is so less complicated if we actually uh, know all of these things. And um, we are now we are way aware of it than I. I mean, I am way way aware of it than I was two months ago. Uh, and um, it's life is. I mean according to Swami uh, and I, I believe it's flowing very smoothly so I will leave my life in his hands so thank you um, brother Saha for your wonderful words you're welcome yes we all you know just letting go of what we are not it only becomes difficult to let go if you're holding on to something so dearly thinking that is the absolute truth and most of the times what we hold on to so dearly is a polarized view <laughs> Because the world must be this way or it should not be this way. And in that, in that polarized view, we suffer. Because it takes a lot of energy to hold on to that. But if you're not, well, you all of a sudden got so much energy. And you could now use that energy to send love to everyone involved. 
yes and i think i'm now right now living proof of that <laughs> thank beautiful Brother Julius, I think we've reached the time for today to pass on the space for the next program, right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, your view is always very well articulated and very ex expansion oriented. I love it when you say that when we become conscious of the quantum field, we can create a beautiful dance. <laughs> And this is so much like, you know, the cosmic dance that, uh, you know, it is where the quantum field is played, you know, dancing with the shadow. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for this. And uh, we will see you guys again tomorrow. Sairam. Oh yeah, there is another session at 7.30 yeah? um, uh, India time, okay, for those who could not make it for today, you know, and somewhat in, incorporated, but uh, yes, it's available. Om Sai Ram. Sai Ram, thank you. Thank you, Sai Ram. Sai Ram, thank you all. Sai Ram, thank you so much, it was wonderful. Sai Ram, thank you. Sai Ram, thank you. Sai Ram, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Sai Ram. 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 Thank you.